Today on Lessons in Life and Love, How to Move On, Show 83. We're going to cover understanding the process of moving on, getting through the first stage, the most difficult one, really considering your reasons to leave or should you stay and try and work it out, taking care of yourself and healing with coaching, the second stage, moving forward into your new life, new goals and dreams and creating the life you desire. And lastly, forgiveness to open your heart and attract new love again, but this time an emotionally healthy, evolved and conscious partner. All today on Lessons in Life and Love with Coach Rihanna Milne. Welcome to Lessons in Life and Love with Rihanna Milne, where we show you how to have the positive mindset for success in all life areas. It's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 4 and Show 83 of Lessons in Life and Love podcast. I'm your host and global life and love coach, Rihanna Milne, coming to you every Friday on LessonsInLifeAndLove.com and on my app, Lessons in Life and Love on the go. I'm all about helping you transform your life in all areas into one that you're passionate about and to help you attract and have the love that you deserve. I'm on a mad mission to change the way the world loves. So you'll learn how to have emotionally healthy, evolved and conscious love and how to avoid toxic, painful and traumatic relationships, which seem too prevalent today. It's time to help you create the life you desire and to have the love that you deserve. So if you have a personal concern, I invite you to meet with me for a life and love transformation discovery session this week. Just sign up at the promotional special on the header of my website at rihannamilm.com. So let's dive in, love angels and transformers. Got a lot to cover today. I know with this coronavirus, there's a lot of couples that are in a toxic place right now. A lot of people are trying to decide whether to stay in the relationship or leave. This is from chapter 10 that I'll be covering today from my number one bestseller on Amazon, Love Beyond Your Dreams, Break Free of Toxic Relationships to Have the Love That You Deserve. And it is part of the sister book that I use for coaching which is Live Beyond Your Dreams, From Fear and Doubt to Personal Power, Purpose and Success, which is all about the mindset for success. Now you can get free chapter downloads of both books at my website, rihannamilne.com. Just go to the book section and it's like the first 60 pages of each book. So enjoy that. This is chapter 10, How to Move On. And I love this quote by William Jennings Bryan, destiny is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. Keep in mind, you always have a choice to love in a different way. Teachings from Buddhism, which I absolutely love, say that relationships are brought into our life to teach us something. However, unless you see and understand the childhood patterns that you bring into relationships, you're bound to repeat the same mistakes. We simply call that same partner, different face. In other words, you're going to keep attracting the same type of love into your life over and over and over again until you can correct the emotional patterns that are keeping you in this chemical attraction. Part of healing is taking the time to reflect on what good you brought into the relationship. What past issues or emotional triggers or traumas and insecurities would have caused the problems that have come up on both your ends and what you can do better next time? Realize that your partner had both good and bad qualities and past issues that they also brought into the relationship. If you two have not gone to a certified clinical trauma professional and worked through your past emotional traumas with that coach and gotten to the bottom of the root of the issues and learned the new communication skills to move forward, you are bound to normally repeat the same mistakes in relationships. Breaking up is hard to do and it's a problem process rather than a single event. You probably can recall the beginning of a spiral that led to the relationship ending. I mean, all these relationships start out wonderful, of course, or you wouldn't have been in an exclusive relationship or a marriage. It had to be wonderful in the beginning. So you have to go back and really trace what happened, what was the beginning of the breakdown, what was your responsibility and your partner's responsibility. You can probably recall the beginning of the spiral that led to the relationship ending. Had there been an affair, an addiction, a breach of trust, a lot of lies, toxic anger, chronic unemployment that left you totally stressed out, selfishness or a lack of responsibility. If you have a family where there's only 
only one partner pulling all the weight and taking all that responsibility and the other partner just didn't get involved. As long as it took to reach the final physical departure, it will take as long, if not longer, for your partner to be gone from your heart, mind, and soul. Usually the first stage after a breakup is shock especially if they left you without informing you, which is really the ultimate cowardice. The next stage could be anger or depression or a combination of both. You may even feel some relief knowing that you no longer have to endure your partner's rages, mistakes, addiction, lame lies, or excuses. I remember leaving my toxic relationship. It was a ton of weight off my shoulders. I felt so free and all I could say was, there's no price you can put on peace. That peace felt wonderful for me. You'll feel anger at their apparent escape from any responsibility if they leave you to carry on with their destructive habits. While you'll be relieved in part, you'll also mourn the loss of your dreams that you might have set up for your retirement or your future or your family and the loss of a father for your children. The death of a relationship and severe bruising of your self-esteem can also occur. If he lacked integrity and fled, leaving you to explain it all to everyone, their disappearance or an admission that they really screwed up and couldn't face your parents, friends, or children, or the community, leaves you holding that burden. You're the one that's going to have to be the brave face to go out and explain to everyone where is so-and-so when you were used to be seen as a couple. You may have to decide to leave them because of their addiction or toxic behaviors or for not living up to promise after promise. What probably happened here was that you fell in love with someone's potential and that potential and the promise never came through. And that is a huge letdown. The lifestyle you were to share together slowly degenerated as they moved through life, just treading water, just getting by, while you might have worked twice as hard to make up for their slack. Your dedication to working hard never changed, but theirs might have, maybe making you resentful, stressed out, exhausted, and angry as you felt that they took advantage of your good nature and your work ethic. You know, once somebody told me, said, you're a real workhorse, and a workhorse is a horse that is beaten and walks for miles and miles with heavy burdens on their back. And I said, I never chose to be a workhorse horse. I'm only a workhorse because you have refused to work at all. And that was the beginning of the end. And I don't mind working hard for myself and my children, of course, to give my children the lifestyle that they deserve and the one that I choose and desire. That doesn't bother me, but it does bother me if I'm taken advantage of and quote, I'm the workhorse, unquote, and they're taking advantage. Hell no, I was out. You want and deserve more in life as well as a partner who feels the same. You don't want a partner who's a child and needs to be taken care of. If you're a woman, as soon as you step up to mommy role and they become the child, all sexual desire is lost. Then the other partner can't figure out why that partner's not interested in sexual intimacy because they're angry and resentful that the partner has become like a child. During this time, you'll feel emotions that are completely normal, like shock and anger, denial, depression, rage, maybe lots of crying at the drop of a hat, pain, planning your solutions, whether to move on or maybe get back together, missing your partner and unbearable loneliness. This could be severe if you've experienced any abandonment as a child and it's hard to break up and move forward because you crave that love that you didn't get as a little person. This phase could be considered love addiction and also stages and signs of PTSD from love trauma depending on exactly what happened. If it was severe, you'll want to not go out into the community to explain what happened or answer that where's the so-and-so question when people are so used to seeing you two together. It will be difficult or impossible to go to your regular spots or listen to music you both loved and danced to. There'll be times when you hate them and wish them dead, maybe love them and want them back, or bargain with them to try again because you'll have weak moments when you think things weren't so bad. You'll remember all the good, beautiful times in the beginning and say, how could I ever have this with anyone else? The torment of your emotional pendulum back and forth is both natural and exhausting. This is truly the time that you should be getting a life and love trauma recovery coach to help you through this pain 
help you stay strong and keep you focused on a positive and amazing future where you can meet someone who's emotionally healthy, evolved, and conscious as a partner. Through the first stage of loss, anger, and sadness, I recommend that you get busy and clean your environment. Cleaning is a feng shui concept and it brings about peace and calm, something you desperately need right now. Cleanse the entire house, throw out anything that belongs to him, empty the garage and the attic, wipe down floors and kitchen cabinets and clean out the closets. Once you remove all that clutter and anything you no longer want or use, slowly paint or redecorate your home exactly how you want it, starting with brand new sheets and a beautiful, luxurious bedspread. The new bedding makes all the difference in your room. When I teach decorating to some people, keep in mind the bed can be the number one art piece in your room. It's the main focus point, so make it look beautiful. An excellent guideline for tossing things is to get rid of everything you haven't used in a year. You probably don't need it and you'll probably never miss it. You actually may consider a move. So preparing the house now to be bought is a very good idea. It's still best though to stay put for at least a year and make no quick personal or financial decisions. Realistically, it may be necessarily financially to sell your home and downsize your living space. If you decide to stay in your home, consider the painting, replacing or rearranging furniture and purchasing a few new accessory items that you love. Be careful though not to overspend at this time and get into debt. Just purchase a few things that will make you feel renewed and beautiful in your environment. Some additional benefits of feng shui are it can improve your balance in life. It encourages you to think creatively. It helps you get unstuck from your current situation, allowing you to think clearly about the new life that you desire. It is said that good feng shui can help increase personal wealth and it keeps creating harmonious relationships with others. Try learning more about this and other holistic healing methods. You may find your eating habits drastically change at this time. Many people admit not being able to eat for days and yet others overeat. Be careful to do neither in extreme. If you don't have much of an appetite, eat at least some proteins and healthy foods throughout the day. If you tend to overeat, get motivated to start a healthier eating plan and visit the gym. You want to look and feel sexy again. It is the best form of personal revenge, but do this for you and not to win your partner back. Eat healthy food. Try what I call the God diet. Everything that is provided for you on this earth from God is what you should eat. That includes fruits, nuts, steamed fresh vegetables, fish or lower level animal meat such as turkey or chicken. Stay away from pasta, white bread, sugar, dairy, large animal red meats which are shown to be high in fat and difficult to digest or man-made or manufactured packaged foods. Those are the worst. For breakfast, have a protein shake with almond milk or coconut and fresh berries, cinnamon, and a spoonful of fiber. At lunch, consider eating two of the following choices, Greek yogurt, an avocado, hard-boiled egg, or fresh green salad with natural nuts, cranberry, and light dressing. Throughout the day, drink hot green tea with lemon and unsweetened cranberry juice or water with lemon. For dinner, eat fish, chicken, or turkey with steamed vegetables and a yam. Cook with extra virgin olive oil. Try to eat your dinner before 5 p.m. so that your food fully digests by bedtime. Eating later often causes excess pounds. Snacks can include apple slices with low-fat protein peanut butter or fresh popped air popcorn or use olive oil. You can often lose a pound a day eating a diet of high protein, steamed vegetables, and natural foods. Avoid the whites, which means sugar, rice, potatoes, and flour. Start dressing well and present yourself to the world with pride. Now that you're single, you'll soon be available to date. Of course, wait till after you heal and work with a love trauma recovery coach. Singles, are you really frustrated and tired of the dating scene? Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse or harder to meet someone wonderful, here comes coronavirus and our inability to go out at all to date. Now you're really feeling the pangs of loneliness and wondering 
where do I go from here? Well, things will normalize soon and we'll all be emerging from our homes and dates in the real world will occur again. The question is, will you be ready? I have designed a brand new mini series for singles called Success in Dating. Let's talk about love. I cover the top five dating frustrations and most asked for advice from my single over 20 years of coaching them, find them happy relationships. This is a part of my most popular intensive singles program, Dating to Mating, that is four to six months long with a 150 page notebook. But you can do the mini series at home in no time. It's a perfect way to tap into the quality of information in Dating to Mating and get amazing dating advice from me, your coach, on audio and video. Check it out during its introductory 50% savings special at rihannamilne.com forward slash dating mini series forward slash because it's time to have the love that you deserve. Consider a new haircut, color, or style, and donate all those clothes you haven't worn that are out of shape or style or that you just don't like. The key is to simplify your life as much as possible. The reason I advise all this cleaning is that so you can dispel your hostile energy in a healthy way as possible. Listen to upbeat music or motivational recording while you're doing this task. Exercise or cleaning your whole house will bring fabulous results that you'll love and at the same time, help get rid of obsessive thoughts and anger. At the end of the day, you should feel exhausted enough to fall asleep. When going through the aftermath or shock of a sudden breakup, you may often fall asleep only to wake up in the middle of the night with thoughts that keep you awake for hours. In the beginning, a sleeping aid might help, but don't use medication for an extended period. Try to stop after one week. A more natural sleep aid is melatonin, and you can find that in the vitamin section of your drugstore. When your body is thrown off, your sleep mechanism is as well. Melatonin will put your body back on a natural sleep cycle, but take one pill two hours before you want to be asleep. Try meditating and saying a prayer as you lay down in bed for peace and forgiveness and for calm and for you to have a new healthy love come into your life. Just know that your emotions are gonna go up and down and that the stress will make you feel tired and forgetful. Keeping busy will not only help you frame the time you need to think and dispel your anger, but it will also help you set up new goals. Your anger can actually push you to excel and create the new life that you've always wanted. Your partner's no longer there to tell you what you can't do or that you can't afford something or that they don't want you to do something. So use anger constructively now. Let it push you towards your best personal success at this time. Take the time for you and to rebuild your life. Don't rush out there to date because you're feeling lonely. Focus on you and finding self-love right now. Living well is your best revenge. Hate can destroy you if you don't find some good from the bad and use it in a positive, constructive way. It can cause overpowering stress and illness for you and your children. Focus instead on the new life you're creating right now. As you cleanse, think about all the blessings you do have in your life. Be grateful that that toxic emotional manipulator is out of your life. You've been given an open space to create something new, to be caring and loving to yourself and find other caring and loving people to enter into your new life. While you're busy cleaning, organizing, and reading motivational and inspirational books, don't isolate yourself. Tell your friends in the support system what has happened. Don't suffer alone or in silence. However, do get to find your coach and go to spiritual services. Call a few friends that will be supportive. However, you don't want to be calling them constantly or whining to them nonstop. This is the part that a coach would take over for. You could ruin a friendship that's really important to you if you're super focused and intense on this one problem that you're going through. They are not your coach and counselor. Let them be your friend and hire a good relationship recovery coach. But it's important not to suffer alone or in silence. Again, I strongly suggest you don't date for some times because you'll automatically make comparisons with each new date and more often than not will show disappointment and a negative attitude. 
Go out with friends instead and enjoy yourself. Plan several ladies' nights out or consider traveling somewhere beautiful and fun with a good friend. Stay away from negative people or those not sympathetic to you and your pain right now. This could possibly include family members or siblings. Be careful not to overload your friends with your pain or unending stories as they have their own lives and struggles. Ask about their lives and share talking time equally with them. Be sure to ask them to be confidential with what you share as you're still figuring out your own path. Consider writing out your feelings and then spare your friends from all these obsessive thoughts. Writing is a liberating therapy too, so keep a journal or write a book that will inspire or help others. Remember to include your daily blessings. This will help your thoughts move in a more positive direction. Reach out to friends from high school or college or through Facebook and get to know each other again. Go see comedy shows or funny movies. It will make you feel great to laugh again. Make sure you meditate or pray daily, starting with that attitude of gratitude and by giving thanks to God for all your life blessings. Then ask for what you do want. Some of that might be peace, newfound energy, a sense of calm in the face of anxiety, stress or depression, and finally for healthy love to enter into your life. The latter could appear through several means like male or female friends or mentors, children, maybe possible future love partners that you just feel comfortable with as a buddy right now. Don't fixate or fall in love with someone exclusively. Don't look for that. Instead, tell potential suitors that you're just in dating mode, not looking for anything serious right now, just looking to meet new friends. Go out and have some fun, smile and laugh a lot. Men love women with positive energy. So get to know these men slowly and don't sleep around. That's the worst thing you could do because then you'll be known as a player or worse. Keep things honest, light, fun, and friendly, and this will transform you into attracting your new great partner. With so many choices, your confidence will soar. With time, one special partner should emerge who will let you know that they would like to date you exclusively. At this point, if you enroll in Life and Love Transformation Coaching with me, by the time you start dating, you'll have all the knowledge you need to feel confident that this new partner is a great match for you. Do you have a teen or high school grad in your life that you're worried about? Whether you're a mom, dad, or grandparent, it's up to us to give our teens the resiliency and developmental assets that they need to succeed in life, love relationships, and business. Today's teen is worried about our world. What will their future be like? They're anxious about whether to go into debt for an education, what jobs will exist if they go to college, how will they earn enough money to be independent, and with today's hookup culture, will they be able to have a quality, loving, and emotionally healthy relationship? As the adult in their life, you can help them now. Enroll them in life transition coaching for those ages 16 to 30 who are struggling with life's choices, who can't find work, are stuck in anxiety, depression, addiction, self-harm, or blame outside of themselves, or for those who have just failed to launch. This is a master's degree in life. That's imperative to do before they even consider investing in college, or if they have graduated from college and can't seem to find work. Give them the psychological and emotional edge in life to succeed no matter what the outside circumstances are by learning the Mindset for Success system. Many young people have excelled without college because it's no longer the success ticket it once was. But having the confidence to create the life you desire along with the motivation to succeed is. Learn more at rihannamilne.com. Just go to rihannamilne.com forward slash life transition programs. That's rihannamilne.com life transition programs programs and give your teen or young adult the one gift that will last forever and truly make a difference. If your ex had an addiction, reach out to the Al-Anon or Naranon communities. They're really helpful. There's also Gaminon and SA sexual addictions meetings for the partners and domestic violence support groups. It helps greatly to be around others who have suffered as you have with an addicted or abusive spouse. 
be open to making new friends, but be cautious not to continue in negativity or ex-bashing, both which need to end. Don't attempt to hurt yourself or impose your anger on all your new partners. One person caused you pain, not all of them. Be careful not to spiral and see your whole life as a failure. Don't give away your personal powers to a toxic partner who isn't worth the effort. Get strong for you, and if you have kids, they really need you right now. If, of course, you're feeling suicidal, call 911 and go to your local emergency room for an evaluation and the chance to speak with a crisis counselor. Empower yourself to get the help that you need. You've been through a traumatic episode, which we call love trauma, and it's very similar to PTSD. Be gentle with yourself during this time of transition. In the second phase of healing, you may feel ready to date or choose to enter into a temporary flirtatious relationship. Just be sure you both understand that this is a friend's relationship, not to look to this person to be in a boyfriend, girlfriend, or exclusive mate and partner. This arrangement should be temporary and mutually acceptable, and it's clearly not for the long term. Remember that this arrangement's not for everyone. You need to be strong and confident to handle this type of arrangement so nobody gets hurt. Do keep your head clear so that you can move forward with your new goals. A new romance could reinforce your physical attraction and sexuality and prove that your ex didn't destroy your sexual power. Make sure that enough time has passed and you've healed from the relationship. Don't risk emotional pain for either one of you. It could be a fun and fabulous break from the duties that come from an exclusive steady relationship. Just call your own shots as to when and where you'll see your new friend. Keep it light and infrequent enough so you feel no obligation during the time that you're meant to have for you and you're still sorting out your new life. Make it quite clear to this new partner that you're not looking for exclusivity. Do treat yourself to healing remedies like a weekly massage to rid your body of stress toxin. Maybe get a manicure and pedicure or other spa treatments for a special reward to yourself. Consider getting a treatment to fill in your smile lines or forehead wrinkles. Be smart, get several doctor's opinions and choose wisely. But if this is something you want to make you feel fabulous and look fabulous, go for it. Don't have any guilt about any of these things, but also don't rush into anything impulsively and investigate all these treatment choices over time to ensure their safety. Just know that it's your life now and you have the freedom to do what you want, when you want, without asking ones any permission. And isn't that wonderful? Be absolutely certain you're doing these things for you and not to win your ex back. Take time with these decisions and choose any or all of these treatment options when you feel emotionally settled. Do discuss all these major options with your coach or therapist and get at least three opinions on any surgical decision. When cleaning out things, be sure to throw away all the useless love letters and token gifts he gave you if they're causing you heartache. This lets out old memories and toxic love energy and allows a new path for superior love to enter your life. Some women feel fine saving items as a fond memory of the love they once shared, and these things can even help in finding forgiveness. Box up the letters and cards and put them away in an attic or somewhere that you won't see them daily. You could give old family photos to your children to keep of memories if this is with their father. Do keep the jewelry you deserved every piece of it or get several bids and sell it for the best price to put it towards something that you really want. Catch up on all your medical appointments, especially if you're married and you may lose your health insurance and you're in the process of divorcing. Take care of yourself and get all those appointments done. Get all your prescriptions filled as much as you can right up to the date of your divorce. Find a new and cheaper cost plan that may be better than any COBRA offering, and it usually will be. See if you'll qualify for Obamacare. Do creative things, write, journal, paint, go to cooking school, dance class, learn a musical instrument, take up photography, or go to a craft class. Creative arts can make you feel calm and peaceful and you'll enjoy the process as well as your finished product. Take a period of time to work very hard or take on an extra job, maybe six months to a year, because work can actually be good therapy. It may be the perfect time to launch the new business you've always wanted to do, but never had the support to do. 
don't do anything rash and leave your main job, but start what you might want to do, your passion project part-time while you heal and catch up financially. Taking on extra work is best done during the cold, dark winter months if you live in a seasonal climate. You won't miss being outside that much. Save more free time for the warmer, sunnier months so you can be outside enjoying yourself in a beautiful, natural environment. You may want to adopt a puppy or a kitten, plant a new garden, volunteer for a children's organization, or connect with nature or other living things. Again, eat healthy foods, take great vitamins, get regular exercise, and lose any extra weight. Do whatever it takes to feel and look fabulous. Know that your pain will eventually go away. The busier you stay with new goals, plans, and dreams, the better you'll feel as time passes. After several months to one year, the pain of your lost relationship will subside and you'll have a gorgeous new home, feel great about yourself and your self-esteem, and you'll have many new accomplishments if you have a solid plan that you're working with your coach. Remember, this relationship is merely a small part of your life journey. You'll get to the point where you can look back on that painful relationship with some fond memories and minimal regret, as well as having it as a learning experience. You'll grow stronger and finally say, look at me now, watch me. If directly after the breakup, you did set your daily, weekly, and monthly goals to reinvent and love yourself more, with a great life and love coach. You'll be amazed at how far you'll come in one or two years time. Geez, working with a coach, I see my people change within two months. And by the time they're done their four or six month coaching program, they've totally reinvented themselves, look great, have an amazing home, and many of them start the businesses that they love. You'll know that breaking free from a toxic relationship was the best move you've ever made. There is indeed a fabulous life beyond a toxic relationship. By the end of the healing process, it's important to forgive the toxic person and bless the relationship that had existed. Why? It's important to find the good and the bad and realize that the breakup may be the very incident that propelled you forward and directed you to finding your personal greatness. The relationship may open you to feeling more love and compassion for others in pain. You know, I look at that in my second toxic relationship when I broke free of that and he had childhood trauma. That was not even a word that existed when I broke that relationship. It was my research that found what his faulty behaviors had come from. And he had unfortunately eight out of the 10 childhood traumas at a very high severity rate. And you know, the last thing he said as he was leaving town in shame due to his actions, he goes, I don't know why I sabotage everything I love. And I said, you know what? I don't know why you do either but I'm going to figure it out. And I needed the answers for my own healing. It was my healing journey that made me discover how working with many populations of trauma, school kids from grades kindergarten through college, the kids at the children and adolescent wards at the hospital that I worked at, and the teens in the drug and alcohol rehab center, as well as working with women from the prison system that ended up in a rehab center. All these people had childhood trauma and grew up and found that it was ruining their lives as young people, young adults, as well as people with addiction late into their 60s and 70s. So the sooner you can heal the childhood trauma, the sooner you can change your life and love situation. That's what happened when I discovered what childhood trauma was. So my ex propelled me forward to have a passionate business that I love and helping people every day to transform their lives. That's the good from the bad that I have found. You also are going to learn valuable lessons about relationship boundaries and now have the wisdom to recognize dysfunctional personality types before you get emotionally or physically involved. By becoming so focused on your new life, dreams, and goals, you may find that you've radically changed your life for the better. I certainly hope so. I mean, my clients sure do. You're going to feel more peaceful, successful, talented, creative, beautiful, outgoing, confident, and financially stable. 
Moving on from your toxic relationship is your opportunity to shine. You're going to look back and say, it's the best thing that you ever did. And you know what? Isn't that a fabulous blessing? And with that, today's lesson ends. Okay, love angels and transformers, that's all we have time for today. I appreciate you sharing the love and the mission of helping me change the way the world loves by sending this show link to your friends that you love and care about. Please take a moment to subscribe to the show and give me a five-star rating and a comment on what you liked about this particular show. You can always contact me at LessonsInLifeAndLove.com about a show that you would like me to do, as well as easily share the show for free from there. Remember, you can reach out for help from me during the week at my website for that Life and Love Transformation Discovery Session, and that's at RihannaMilne.com. And also, while you're there, get my free ebook on how to have the love that you deserve and also the free book downloads for Live and Love Beyond Your Dreams, and also take the four free love tests while you're there. Because as always, I am here to help you create the life that you desire and to have the love that you deserve. Have a very blessed, beautiful, safe, and fabulous week. We want to thank you for joining us on this episode of Lessons in Life and Love with Coach Rihanna Milne. Go to RihannaMilne.com for more resources. If you're really ready to take action to improve your life or love situation, apply now for a session with Rihanna. And remember, it's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve.